What actually happens at the end of The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening? To state the obvious, everything in this video is going to be a spoiler. So if you are looking to avoid spoiling yourself, what are you doing here? Many people view Link's Awakening as one of, if not the, best Zelda game in the series. Besides Wand of Gamelon, of course. However, others are left feeling disappointed, and reasonably so if you look at the game as simplistically as possible. As someone who has played through this game nearly every year since its initial release in 1993, I've picked up on a lot of the nuances and a few key details which most people probably overlook. Details which shine a new and more positive light on the devastating destruction of the beautiful Koholand Island. To tell you the truth, I've made this video because I can't find another YouTube video outlining what I find most significant about this game. Most videos on the topic are made probably soon after a first playthrough while the player hasn't really had time to reflect on the occurrences which took place. And to clarify, I'm not saying I'm smarter or more observant than anyone who hasn't picked up on these details. I'm just a nerd, okay? I nerd out on everything I do. So here it is. At the beginning of Link's Awakening, we see that Link is voyaging in his ship when suddenly the winds pick up and storms break loose. After braving the storm to the best of his might, his boat is struck by lightning, and the screen goes dark. Link is then found and saved by an orange-haired cutie named Marin, who later gets massively friend-zoned and left behind to die. Well, potentially. But we'll discuss that in just a moment. After finally coming to, Link chats with Marin and her father Terran, and then leaves their house to begin his adventure. And this is where, with a keen eye, we will find our first big clue. Getting your sword and shield back, you decide it's time to start killing the baddies. So you venture into the mysterious woods to search for the key to the entrance of Dungeon 1, Tail Cave. The mysterious woods is mostly filled with m, -m, -m moblins and other enemy types, however, the path is eventually blocked off by a raccoon who stops us in our tracks. This raccoon tells us he has set up a spell on the woods to prevent us from finding the Tail Cave key. The spell which has been set on the woods by this dubious raccoon acts as a sort of barrier, a wall which cannot be overcome by our own means. So we find a mushroom, turn it into a powder, and sprinkle the powder on the raccoon. The raccoon absolutely loses his mind, and poof, he turns into Terran. Terran tells us that he bit into a psilocybin mushroom in the woods and suddenly he had the darndest dream. He claims that he was dreaming, that he was a raccoon. Hmm. As a gift for waking him up, Terran releases the spell which has been set on the mysterious woods, allowing us to progress through and collect the tail cave key. Interesting, but let's carry on for now. Later in our adventure, we are able to sprinkle the same magic powder in three caves to wake up a bat from his nap. He then scolds us and curses us, burdening us with carrying larger amounts of bombs, arrows, and powder for the rest of the game. A heavy knapsack is truly a burden. I mean, imagine carrying all that junk while you're stuck in Eagle's Tower for two hours. Okay, a dreaming raccoon, a napping bat, what else do we have? Let's head northeast in Mabe Village over to the Dream Shrine. The Dream Shrine is a strange room hidden in plain sight right in front of us, at the very beginning of the game. Inside, there is nothing more than a bed. We can enter the Dream Shrine, lay in the bed, and drift off to sleep. Every time we sleep here, Link is taken into a dream where he can find the most important item in the game. The Macarena. This ocarina will, at the end of the game, be used to awaken the windfish. Wait a second, awaken the windfish? But I thought this video was to prove that it wasn't all just a dream. How can the windfish be woke if our eyes aren't woke? At this point you're probably thinking, this isn't actually going anywhere. And you'd be exactly right. This whole game was a dream, and that's all there is to it. Thanks for watching. But wait a second. Terran was, in fact, a raccoon. That's awfully strange for him to claim that he was only dreaming that he was a raccoon. It wasn't a dream at all, right? Or if it truly was a dream, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because it stopped us from progressing. 
So if someone else's dream has such a massive impact on us, does it really matter if it's a dream? Surely what matters here is the real life consequences. If you had one of those dreams, you know, one of those dreams where you're suddenly a millionaire, and you wake up from that dream with that million dollars in your pocket, well, you'd have a really big pocket. But also, at that point, the dream wasn't real, but the impact of the dream was. Link's Awakening is filled with references to dreams which seem to more accurately reflect reality than a figment of our imaginations. Nearly every time a sleeper is involved, that's when we get our clues. It is by no coincidence that Terran is one of the very first encounters we have in the game. He is the second character we meet on this little island. Meeting him and immediately learning of the consequences of someone else's dream lays out the foundation for the rest of this surreal journey. The raccoon is a lesson to keep in mind as we push forward through the conflicting information of this so-called dream island. Now how is it when we wake up from the dream shrine, Link still has the ocarina? Just like the million dollar concept I've provided, Link wakes up with a very real item from his actions within the dream shrine dream. Was it still a dream? Sure. Maybe, probably, but that is beside the point. The point is, it simply does not matter. What does matter is what we take with us. The occurrences within the Dream Shrine may not be real, but the Ocarina absolutely is. The island itself, it may not be real, but the time we spent there, the people we met, and the challenges we went up against, and how those define us as people, that should never be forgotten. A little bit later, during one of the more intimate moments of the game, we find Marin on a beach. As we sit on a log overlooking the endless stretch of sea, she tells us how she has always known there is more beyond the island. This serves as another key detail, because up until this point in the game, nobody else seems to have even considered the existence beyond the island. She tells us of her dreams to be a seagull so she can sing to everyone and anyone across the seas that will listen to her. Do some exploring and just the freedom of flying above the world, not limited by her human body. At another point, Marin turns to us and says, Link, someday you will leave this island. I just know it in my heart. Don't ever forget me. If you do, I'll never forgive you. Sure, maybe it's a little sad to leave the world behind, but Marin only asks us to remember her, and that's exactly what we're supposed to do. At the end of the game, we play the Ballad of the Windfish to awaken the Windfish, and just like that, we awaken the Windfish. If these specific dreams have been proven in our quest so far to have genuine consequences based on our actions, this directly implies if we did not play the song to wake up the Windfish, the Windfish would die and we would also die in that dream. Neither Link nor the Windfish would wake up from the damage of the storm, and the hero of time dies right then and there, sinking to the bottom of the ocean, never to be seen again. Now, I am not proposing this as a theory, I am proposing that this, when compared to the alternatives, seems to be the most probable assumption as to what really happened on the island, and why it is significant, not only to Link as a developing character, but also for ourselves as individuals along for the ride. When we look back with this in mind, there's always something to learn. Remember that bat who cursed us because we interrupted his naps? Those curses actually benefited us. We got to upgrade our bomb bag, arrow quiver, and powder bag. Maybe the storm Link was faced with, despite being a rough moment for our Mr. Hero, it actually may have been a blessing. I mean, without it, this game wouldn't even exist. Sometimes, in the toughest of moments, we really need to embrace the good which came because of it. And maybe that good wasn't just for us. When we beat the game, we save Link from his death, but we also save the Windfish. The Windfish flies over Link and gives out a loud wail. No pun intended. He gives out a sound as if to thank Link for saving him, and also maybe just to say hi because they shared such an amazing journey together. And they both got through it. Even though Link is shown sailing right and the Windfish is going left and they are clearly going their, their different directions, they still can both look back on those times they shared and always remember what a great game this is. 
Many of the characters, such as the quadruplet kids who can't fathom life outside of the island, well, they're fictional characters created by the Windfish's imagination. Others may be much more than that. If you beat Link's Awakening without dying, you are granted the good ending. In this good ending, not only do we save the Windfish and Link, but we also see the spirit of Marin at the happiest we've ever seen her. And then, we see her fly away as a seagull. Her wish was granted. Being that Link existed before the dream, and the Windfish also presumably existed before the dream, we can safely assume Marin also existed as a seagull before the dream. It's kind of like when Marin's father, Terran, was initially human, but became a raccoon in his so-called dream state, only to be revived back to his human form when he was woke. The dream being a challenge to grant us new perspectives. Maybe that's exactly what Marin got out of the dream as well. Marin, in her seagull form, before getting caught in the dream, may have always looked upon humans with envy. And this dream for her was a challenge so that she could break free of her envy and embrace what she has. Just as you and I should. We've all got struggles and things we may not like about ourselves, but maybe we don't have it so bad. Maybe we're just too focused on what we don't have and not focused enough on what we do have. There comes times where we have to move on because that's just the cards we were dealt. After leaving the fourth dungeon, Angler's Tunnel, we are followed by a ghost. The game doesn't really explain this ghost, but what we do know is that the ghost takes a nostalgic look at his life, his house, and his belongings. He feels immense sorrow when he notices that everything he leaves behind will be unchanged. A certain sense of helplessness. But then he asks you to assist him to his grave, where he fully accepts this storm which he got caught up in is not a storm he will be waking up from. This dream is his final resting place. Not everything that happens allows us to grow. Inevitably, we must all eventually say goodbye and come to terms with our own mortality. But even so, he can look at the world, remember that he did have a house, some clothes, collections, and a compass and map on the table, implying a vast history of exploration and great times. He had a life, and his life impacted others, including ours. Exclusively in Link's Awakening DX, we are able to see a photo featuring the ghost waving goodbye. He looks happy and content. Because sometimes there's nothing we can do about it. Sometimes we just have to accept that this is the way things are and let go. However, sometimes we move on by choice, because it's time to grow and continue our own adventures. There came a point where Link had to decide he was going to risk it all. He was going to wake up the windfish despite constant warnings that everything would fade to nothing. Through the Blinder, the island of Kaolint is but an illusion. A human monster sees the sky, a scene on the lid of a sleeper's eye. Awake the dreamer, and Kaolint will vanish much like a bubble on a needle. Cast away, you should know the truth. This is literally the writing on the wall. But that risk was a risk worth taking, because it was time to move on.
Look, we all go through hard times in life. Maybe you've had to move away from people you care about, or perhaps you've lost a loved one, or recently went through a tough breakup. Whatever it may be, keep it in your heart and in your mind that sometimes we need to move on. But don't forget those moments. Whatever those moments might be, don't forget how important they were to you, and don't forget how much it has impacted your life. Even if we must move on, and even if it's the toughest thing we've ever done, that's okay. The effects of what happened on Kohola Island was real. Just like everything which happened during and before those difficult moments which you have personally faced. Those moments aren't gone, they are memories which you can take with you and cherish for the rest of your life. You learned from those experiences. You moved on when you had to, and you grew as an individual. You push through the hardships and you are better equipped for whatever challenges you might face next. Honestly, you're kind of awesome. Really, you're awesome. Okay, it's been real guys. I'll catch you in the next video, or in the live streams. There's a link in the description below. By the way, if you learned any other lessons from characters in Link's Awakening, let me know in the comments below. I'd really like to hear how this game has changed or improved your life like it has mine. And again, thank you for watching.